Welcome back to the channel, my friends, Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at this week's Sunday preview, Green or Gold. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. Sunday preview, Green or Gold. Unless you're an Australian sportsman, you've got a choice to make in next week's pre-orders, Green or Gold. Spoiler alert, the correct answer is both. So there is a little video right here. We're going to skip that and take a look at the full article. The galaxy's finest warriors are crashing down into the current edition of Warhammer 40,000. Oh, and the Adeptus Custodes are here too. All right, so we see Codex Orcs Special Edition and then the traditional Codex as well. The definitive document for playing Orcs in the 10th edition arrives in two flavors, Regular and Collector's Edition. Either volume contains the comprehensive rules, background, painting guides you expect from a Codex, as well as a code to activate your copy of the Warhammer 40,000 app. The Collector's Edition is strictly limited in number and arrives with unique artwork and ribbon bookwork and green foil accents. As for the rules, there are 51 data sheets, 6 complete detachments, new crusade tools to launch a galaxy shaking wa, and a combat patrol in the form of Morgrim's Butchers. And a combat patrol in the form of Morgrim's Butchers. An ornery gaggle of beast snagger boys. Alright, so we do see the cover right here and then the limited edition cover as well. And it's definitely worth note that these are coming out, the codexes here, without the normal delay that we see when they come out in like one of the launch boxes. So with the Tau, we saw the codex come out originally in like the actual launch box itself. And then the actual codex won't come out for, you know, potentially weeks or months to come. This is the two-week pre-order period, and then the Orc codex will be out and official. So presumably, unless Games Workshop drops a bomb suddenly... The Orcs and Custodes Codexes will technically be out before the Tau Codex, even though the Tau Codex has been available now for a couple weeks via the Groot Box. So interestingly enough, things are kind of getting shaken up right here. All right, so then we have the Battle Force Stompa Boys. So this is the big box that was shown off recently. There's a new Orc Big Mac, and this box is the first place you can get him. He's accompanied by a full army. 10 Orc Boys, 10 Luda Boys who can be built as Burna Boys, a truck, and a Stompa. This is truly mighty force to be reckoned with. The Big Mac can lead either the boys or the Ludas. He has two head options and weapon options include a custom Mega Blasta, a Tractor Blasta, Power Claw, and Drilla. So we did see the Big Mac on his own. Brand new model right here. Everything else is being recycled from the current Orc range. And then again, this box is coming out separately from the actual Codex itself. So definitely a different way of doing things to what we've seen more recently. All right, and then we had the new Combat Patrol Orcs. So again, very cool of Games Workshop to actually show off what's in the Combat Patrol right away, rather than sort of like waiting, delaying, making us curious. Known as Morgrim's Butchers, this mob of angry beast snagger orcs are clearly disappointed by the dearth of big monsters and vehicles in Combat Patrol, and are taking out their frustration on everyone else. You get a hulking beast boss flanked by 20 beast snagger boys, and backed up by 4 squig hog boys, making this a hard-hitting Combat Patrol with lots of big charge energy. Okay, so an interesting little shakeup right here. So we have a Beast Boss on foot. We have 20 Beast Snagger Boys. And then we have a squad of Squig Hog Boys, which of course includes like the knob on Smash the Squig and then the sweet little Bomb Grot. So very cool. Obviously a much different combat patrol than what we previously saw as this one is completely Beast Snagger themed. And then we know in the new Codex, we're going to get all sorts of different attachments, presumably something to do with like this one specifically. But very cool box set right here, 26 models in it. And again, we see Games Workshop trending towards no more vehicles in the combat patrols. So the only vehicle existing after like the new combat patrol has launched currently is the Necron Tomb Stalker. Every other vehicle has been pulled out. And then we notice also that a lot of the value has been pulled out of these box sets. And again, I think we see that's the case. Now the Orc box set was one of the best had some of the most value of any of the combat patrols in it. And we did a video talking specifically about why you should grab that up before it's gone. This one has substantially less value in it. Still a nice box set, still a good deal and everything, but not nearly as good of a deal. All right, and then we have the Orc data sheet cards and dice. Get Wa, your name here, up and running with two crucial player aids. The Orc's dice and data sheet cards. The dice pack contains 16 six-sided dice cast in a swirled green plastic with white pips. While the data sheet cards collect all of the units from the detachment rules you need in 55 quick reference cards. So a very cool dice. Definitely a big fan of like the actual swirl style dice. I know some people like the sharp corners. Others like the more rounded corners. But very nice little game aids right here coming out. Alright and then on to the Adeptus Custodes. Take the 10,000s out for a spin with the Codex Adeptus Custodes. The essential companion for collecting, painting, and playing an entire army of the Emperor's personal bodyguards. Inside you'll find extensive background lore on this force of demigod champions and the psychic blank compatriots. Alongside four thematic detachments, 18 data sheets covering the primary fighting force of the Adeptus Custodes, and ample crusade content for taking your talents of the Emperor on a narrative campaign. This captivating book will also be available as an awesome collector's edition with suitably gilded soft touch cover, 
Though like the Adeptus Custodes themselves, it's strictly limited in number. So don't miss your chance to scoop one up. All right, so very cool. Here we see actually a different cover on the special edition, which is something we don't often see with Games Workshop for some reason. Uh, cool cover art on both, obviously. It is worth note that there's only four detachments here and 18 data sheets. So interesting. All right, and then we have the brand new Battle Force. The brand new Shield Captain leads an overwhelming force of Custodians in the Auric Champions Battle Force. The Captain comes with two head options and wields a powerful Pyrethite Spear, while his bodyguard comprises five Wardens, six Alaris Terminators, and six Veritus Raiders mounted on fearsome jet bikes. Uh, so just like we see with the Orcs here, the Codex and cards are not included in the box set. This is just models. It does have a single new character model and then a bunch of recycled models as well. So a very cool box set right here. Definitely nice to see the Wardens in a box set as we don't often see that. We got two squads of Terminators, the Shield Captain, and then two squads of Bikes. And again, because we're getting the new Codex coming out with this, we don't know what's actually going to be good. So put the meta aside and don't worry about what's currently good and what you currently would use. Just look at what's actually in this box set and say, hey, does it look like a good deal? Do I want these models or not? And to tell you the truth, it's definitely a cool box. All right, and then on to the Combat Patrol. So we got a brand new combat patrol for the Adeptus Custodes. Again, same thing. The old box was really nice. Had a ton of points and value in it. This one, not bad right here. But the thing that jumps out at me right off the bat is that this one includes Terminators. And then the new box set includes two squads of Terminators. So if you were to buy both and start a new army or build onto an existing army, you're going to have three squads of Terminators right off the bat. So nine Terminators, which is arguably kind of a lot unless they're like suddenly awesome. In which case, by all means. Wield the Golden Sword of the Emperor in a smaller scale Warhammer 40,000 games with Combat Patrol Adeptus Custodes, which also makes for a great start to a larger army. The patrol is led by a charging blade champion who can assemble his force from five custodian guard and a choice between three Alaris Terminators or three Wardens. You'll get all the miniatures in the box, but they're just too powerful to take the whole lot into a single game of Combat Patrol. So once again, with the Custodes box, we see Games Workshop including a bunch of models, but not letting you use all of them just because like the actual Custodes kits, the models are just too elite. You get way too many points for it to be like a relative decent price or like value inside the box. And again, we see the value definitely dropping on these. Now, because of the Sisters of Silence being overpriced, it's not necessarily a worse value than the old box just because like five sisters for 60 bucks was just insane. But here we essentially have like three $60 kits and then the Blade Champion, which is like just over like $220 in value in what's going to amount to a $160 box. So just right in line with Games Workshop's new like price point and value breakdown, not nearly as good as some of the previous boxes are. And again, no vehicles in this box set. It's very clear what Games Workshop is doing. They want the Combat Patrols to be roughly like $220 in value of models in the box set sold at about $160 giving you a roughly like $60 or 30% discount over MSRP. And then they also are just removing all of like the vehicles, the big armor, the tough stuff from the box sets and trending more towards like infantry boxes, which is fine. It just completely changes the game, completely changes combat patrol. And in my opinion, allows them to balance it much more accurately. Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01 a.m. on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now, back to the video. All right, and then we have the data sheets and dice. Complete your custodian collection with a handy dice and data sheet cards. Decked out in shiny gold with 10,000 are known for. A pack of 16 dice are cast in swirled gold plastic with bright red pips and the faction logo on the six. So again, very cool data sheet cards and dice. Nice looking dice. I do like those gold swirls. Very cool. Obviously, the dice boycott continues though. All right, and then on to Horus Heresy. We have the we have the Blood Angel Bale Predator upgrade pack. This was previously shown off, but the Blood Angels are known for a particularly vicious anti-infantry pattern of Predator tank named after their home world. And now you can convert your Deimos Predators into Bale Predators with a slick Forge World resin upgrade pack from Warhammer the Horus Heresy. The pack contains a twin linked Elastis assault cannon for the turret, which can replace the regular Predator cannon at no cost and a pencil mounted version of any of your hatch gunners with the arms and mounting brackets needed to use them. It wasn't enough for the Blood Angels to wield deadly weapons. They had to be beautiful too. This pack contains three 
Umbra pattern bolt guns, an inferno pistol for each of right and left hands, an elastis pattern assault cannon, and one of each of the Legion's famed perdition weapons, a spear, an axe, a sword, and a mace. So very cool. Definitely some nice looking stuff right here. Really, really nice looking weapons. Definitely a fan. The mace is a little lackluster, but the axe, the spear, the sword, all very, very cool. And then of course the assault cannon, inferno pistols, nice looking stuff right here. All right. And then from the Black Library, Big Daka in special edition. Ufak Blackhawk returns in the second full length adventure, The Big Daka by Mike Brooks. This gloriously green signed and numbered special edition right alongside the similarly viridescent edition of Brutal Cunning and features a short story Packin' Heats as an extra bonus with a foreword from the author. This hardback special edition is limited to just 1,500 copies, so don't miss out. So to Big Daka, if you're after this in special edition, 1,500 copies. Very cool. All right, and then we have The Dead Kingdom. The remorseful soul blight vampire known as the Hollow King is back in action. As old debts bound him in service to Nefrata, Mortark of Blood, Cato is plunged into a conflict with Manfred von Karstein in The Dead Kingdom by John French. We'll have to make a painful choice between leaving a city to drown in the tides of war or by defying the will of the Queen of Blood. All right, and then we have Children of Teclas. A modern classic Lumineth Realm Lord adventure returns in a new paperback edition in The Children of Teclas by Evan Dickin. The brilliant lore seeker Alaren and the Illuminated stands guard over the tomb of Nagash in Maroskar where the great necromancer lies after his defeat at the hands of Teclis. Despite her solemn charge, she's determined to find a way to ensure that the god of the undead remains permanently interred, even as Agneth Reaver sacked Maroskar in search of the mages to restore their withered souls. So very cool, lots of excitement here as we have like the drop of two new Codex books. Obviously the meta is ever-changing. We have the Tau Codex that's technically out, but not actually out yet. And now we have the Orcs Codex coming right on its heels with a new box set and then also Combat Patrol. So that is a big shakeup. And then also the same thing for the Adeptus Custodes as well. Brand new codex, big box set, and combat patrol. Total shakeup. We've got new character units for the Orcs and Custodes as well. So that's going to bring new data sheets. We've got multiple new detachments for each. Big box sets, little box sets. So combat patrol is going to get a shakeup as well. Lots and lots going on this week. Super excited. Gotta love how 40k is ever-changing. We'll do a breakdown on the actual box sets and combat patrols, talk about the value inside, what kind of points they contain, and what to expect. Let me know what you're most excited about, what you're planning on picking up. Always like to hear back from you guys in the comments. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring the video. Check out the link in the description to save 15% on Games Workshop products. And for all the people out there that have been missing out on stuff, keep in mind that CMO Games pre-orders go live on Friday night or Saturday at midnight. So you have a chance to score those items at a nice discount with free shipping in the United States before they even go live from Games Workshop. So you can lock them down, not have to wait in the queue, and make sure that you get those pre-orders that you are desperately after. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios, I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm no Votan, but a lot of this stuff is going on my list, and I'm out of here.